Hi students, I am here to show you real quick how to set up an Adobe Spark website for your next student vlogging or academic project for your class, for your teacher. If your school has a subscription to Adobe Express, you'll be able to create an Adobe Spark website. And so there are a bunch of different types of things that you can create in here, but the one that we are interested in is a website. So I'm gonna click on the plus and I'm gonna scroll down to web page. And what I really love about Adobe Spark is it is visually stunning and it is simple, simple, simple. So you can see here that you can click to add whatever you like and you just keep building the page down vertically. And if you have a bunch of different blog posts, that means that your reader will end up scrolling through several different pieces of writing from you. And you can break it up with different sections and headings to indicate like, hey, this is a new post that I am adding on to this page. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we wanna do is to add a title. We can do that. We can also add a subtitle. So I'm just clicking on the banner here. You can give it a short cover. You can do a split layout. You can switch like that. You can add a photo here, a little plus. You can add a photo. You can add more text. You can add a video. So it's pretty intuitive. Just kind of click through, see what you like. I'm going to go back to the cover and I am going to come over here and I'm going to add a photo. So you can see here that you can upload a photo of your own or featured free photos. You can choose from one of the ones that Adobe Spark is suggesting to you. If you have a certain one in mind, like maybe you are going to write a blog post about school. We can see what comes up here. Maybe I'm going to put that in the background, which is looking pretty good. Um, the one thing that you have to be careful about here, unlike Google Sites, it does not auto adjust the background. So you have to be aware of readability and make sure that it's not interfering that background image with your reader's ability to see all of your good ideas. So let's say that I really love that. Then I can scroll to start writing my first story. All right, so I'm gonna adjust me over here and I'm gonna click on the plus and this is where I would add some more content. So it's giving me the basics here. I can do a slideshow, I can do a split layout. I can just start super simple with a heading. An H1, this is the main title of the blog post. An H2, this is a section heading within the blog post. You can, if you are typing, if you want to highlight a certain section of your writing, with an indented quotation section, you can do this, or maybe you have a quotation from somebody else that you want to highlight in that way. You can do bullet points and numbered lists, and you can play around with the visual formatting as well. But since this is my heading, I am going to keep it as an H1 because this is the main title of my piece. Then I'm gonna click and I'm gonna add more text. And this is where I could start my paragraph. And you'll notice that it gives me the option to continue building in content. So let's say I wanted to go back and I wanted to add an image or a video or a button. I could do that and kind of drag things and play around with it from there. I could also do a split layout, which is a nice way to break things up. Let's say I get started and I have my first paragraph and then I want to add an image. And over here, I want some more text. Well, then you can kind of move your readers through your piece and make it look really professional by adding in those visual formatting cues that are really important. And even within your text sections, make sure that is easily scannable, that you break it up into bite-sized pieces, that you call out main ideas and important takeaways with bold or italics or underlining, and just make it a visual experience for your reader. 
All right, so I'm gonna come down here, say I wanted to add a video. So we can include a link to YouTube or we can include those other types of videos that are listed and then we can click add. And you can also come up here to theme and play around with the look and feel. So I can do that one, I can do that one, and you can see that it is playing around with the font choices and so on and so forth. This does not have as many font options as Google Sites because all of those lovely Google fonts are in there, but it certainly has enough to give the look and feel that you are wanting. Anytime that you are writing and you want to see what it would look like live, not in edit mode, you can click on the little eyeball up here and click preview. And this is what it would look like in real time. And what I also love about Adobe Spark is anytime you use one of the Adobe Spark images like I did here in the background of my header, it automatically credits it at the bottom, which is taking care of business for you. So that's a nice feature, I think. All right, I'm going to go back and I am ready to share this. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so click on share. And then you are going to not invite, but you are going to publish and share link. Make sure that you've given your website a title. You can pick a category if you like. You can reveal yourself to be the author or not, depending on your teacher's preference. You definitely want to keep those photo credits that it's going to give you and then click create link. All right, so here is the shareable link that you're gonna to wanna to copy and share with your teacher and your classmates. You do need to make sure though that any changes that you make to your site, you update it, okay? So say I changed to something subtle, I would need to go back up to share, publish and share, and then look, I've already published it but it gives me this little lightning bolt message. We noticed you made some changes. You will need to do this every time you add to your site so that the person who has your link is seeing the most updated version of your work. So don't forget this step because you wanna make sure that you're putting your best foot forward. So I'm gonna click update link and then we can recopy this if you like, but the URL doesn't change. So if you've already shared this once with your teacher or with your classmates, all you need to make sure to do is to update for your new content and it should be good to go. And there you have it. This is how to set up an Adobe Spark web page for all of your writing fun that you are doing in English class or history class or whatever class this might be. Good luck and happy writing.